Welcome, Sundry Readers. I hope you enjoy today's story. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Happy listening! New Faces, New Friends by Arletta Richardson Chapter 12 Waiting Sarah Jane and I spent mornings together, tearing carpet rags, sewing the ends together, and rolling the strips into balls. I'm always disappointed when I see how little rugs so many rags will make, I said. This big ball probably won't even make the center of one when it's braided. You'll have a lot more as time goes on, Sarah Jane said. It's too bad you didn't start saving them back in the days when everything you sewed turned into a rag. You really didn't show much promise as a seamstress, you know. If you think you're going to get a rise out of me, forget it, I told her. I know I wasn't the handiest child Ma had, but she loved me. I paused and looked at the strip of cloth I was sewing. This rug will be a history of my married life before it's big enough to walk on. Here are my first curtains, a couple of aprons, and some dresses. I have some scraps from the baby clothes, too. When I'm old and gray, I can sit in front of the fire and rock and look my life over. Be sure you don't put anything in there that you don't want to remember, then, Sarah Jane advised me. These rugs last forever. We worked in silence for a few minutes. I suppose you and Thomas will go home for Thanksgiving, won't you? We plan to, she replied. We'll go to my folks and his parents will come down and join us. I told Ma that we'll have to celebrate both holidays. We won't make it back for Christmas. Maybe they can come here, I suggested. This is the first Thanksgiving I've ever missed with my family, but I can't travel now. We're going to have a lot of firsts from now on, Sarah Jane said. Snow had begun to fall by the beginning of November and Len stabled lilac with Pa's cows. I never thought I'd miss that animal staring at me through the window, I said to him. But it looks like you can get accustomed to a nuisance, too. If she just didn't look so... so put upon all the time. She has an easier life than anyone on the place. Why can't she act as though she appreciates it? I never noticed that she looked like anything but a cow, Len replied. I don't really think she sets out to make your life miserable. Think what she could do if she tried then, I retorted. For the past month, Ma Williams had been baking my bread for me. It takes the wind out of you to knead the bread, she said. It's no problem to add a few loaves to my batch. I'd be glad to have you both eat with us for the next few weeks, but Len says you want to get meals as long as you can. Oh, yes, I said. I'm feeling fine. I don't move very fast, but I can still get my work done. I hope you aren't worried about me. No, I guess not. But you're so small, Mabel. I'm no smaller than Ma, I laughed. And she handled three of us very well. Dr. Mason says the baby won't be very big. I just hope I won't have to wait until the middle of December for it to get here. What will your ma do with Violet while she's here with you? Do you suppose Violet would like to stay with me? Oh, she would love it. And I know ma would be relieved. But do you really feel up to a four-year-old for a week or more? Certainly, Ma Williams replied. We can use a little life around the house. Violet and Paul get along famously. He teaches her poems to recite and they love to sing together. Poor Pa can't carry a tune with a handle on it, but Violet doesn't care. We'll both enjoy having her. Sarah Jane offered to carry the message to Ma when she goes home for Thanksgiving, I told Len. I really appreciate all your mother does for us. I made up my mind before we were married that I wasn't going to be a bother to her if I could help it. A bother? Len said in surprise. Ma considers you one of her daughters. When she thought you might marry Russ Bradley, she was ready to propose to you for me. Leonard Williams, she said. If you let Mabel get away from you, I'll be tempted to have Pa tell you to find another place to live. Len chuckled. 
Then she said, I'll talk to her and tell her not to do anything foolish. Why, Len, you never told me that. Are you sure it really happened? Ask her yourself, he replied. I think she planned on adding you to the family when you first walked through the door. His eyes twinkled. I planned on it the first time you threw your arms around me. I may as well accept the fact that neither you nor Sarah Jane will ever forget that day, I sighed. That's one of the things that the goat intended for evil and the Lord intended for good. Did you ever tell your folks about it? No. As far as I know, you and Sarah Jane and I are the only ones who can laugh about it. Do you want me to tell them? You do, and I won't be responsible for your safety, I replied. Then we both laughed, remembering that day four years earlier. I had been accepted to teach in North Branch, and Sarah Jane was going to Edenville, about five miles away. We stopped at the house of the board president, who was, of course, Mr. Williams, to get the school key. Not finding anyone there, I started for the barn when a billy goat took out after me. I headed for the barn at a dead gallop and grabbed the first secure-looking object I saw, which happened to be Leonard Williams. I didn't find out that he was the son of the family until I came back to live there when the school opened. I'll never forget how I felt when I discovered that not only were you not the hired man, you were the minister. I almost decided to find another school. Aren't we glad you didn't, Len said, hugging me. I thought you were the nicest thing that ever happened to North Branch. It took a lot of nerve for me to ask you to live on what I made. I would live on less than that as long as I had you, I told him. In a few weeks, there will be three of us. I hope I know how to raise a child properly. With the Lord's help, we'll be fine, Len said. Ma used to say they learned on the first one, practiced on the second, and the rest just followed along. I hope I'm a quick learner. I want this child to be kind and thoughtful and sensitive. Wouldn't it be nice if it had all the good qualities of each of us? Of course, I reflected. Ma's hoping I have one just like I was so I can see what she went through. I can't convince her that I remember well enough without living it over again. Len went to get Ma the day after Thanksgiving, and it added greatly to my peace of mind to have her there. The very next day, Alma arrived. She was tiny, with dark hair and dark eyes and long fingers. She's going to have small bones like you have, Ma said. I'll have to say, though, that she looks more like a Williams than an Odell. Len was pleased about that. I thought I'd like to have a daughter just like you, but I'm happy that she looks a little like me, too. Much to his delight, she grabbed hold of his finger and held on tight. It's a good thing I have tomorrow's sermon ready. I'd never get it done sitting here with you. Thomas had made a cradle for the baby like the one he'd made for Sarah Jane the year before. That evening, they came to check her out. She's a sight better looking than those ones we used to dress up and carry around, Sarah Jane decided. Especially the one we put in Mrs. Carter's baby carriage. We laughed at the memory of the little pig that we had substituted for the Carter's baby. Now I know how that poor lady must have felt, I said. I'm surprised she didn't spank us. I'm surprised we didn't just leave her baby in the pig pen instead of putting it on the bed, Sarah Jane said. She rubbed her cheek on Alma's soft hair. Just think, Mabel, this is the beginning of a new generation. Do you feel up to the responsibility? I'm not sure I do, I replied. But if I'm responsible for only one day at a time, maybe I can make it. We have the same help our folks had. We were silent as we watched Alma sleep. You know, this won't just be a new generation. It's a new century, too. I continued. It will be the 1920s before she has her children. Look how things have changed since the 1820s. How do you get a child ready for a world you don't know anything about? Sarah Jane wondered. I suppose every parent wonders that, I said. Maybe it's just like God's grace. Wisdom comes when you need it. End of chapter 12